Asher working in a healthcare company and based in Germany. In last video, we discussed what are orphan drugs and what is orphan drug designation. Because the financial viability for these orphan drug development is low considering the rare disease impacts the smaller number of people, right? So the sales of the drug is less compared to the common diseases. In common diseases, the market size is bigger, right? So if the market size is less, why the pharmaceutical companies will spend their resources and efforts for developing the orphan drugs? Did this question come to your mind? It's a valid question, right? So therefore, to promote the development of such orphan drugs, health authority provides several benefits and incentives for orphan drug development. In today's video, we will see what are those benefits. Let's see those benefits one by one. First is the research grant. Pharmaceutical companies get some research grant from government for such kind of drug development. Second is tax exemptions. Tax exemptions are also provided to the pharmaceutical companies for the development of orphan drugs. Third is scientific advice and protocol assistance. Health authorities provide the scope of various scientific advice and protocol assistance for the orphan drug development. Because health authorities also wants that the drug should be developed for such rare diseases, right? And that's why they work closely with pharmaceutical companies to advise whenever it's required. Fourth is smaller trial sizes. Because the number of people impacted by the rare diseases are less, therefore the smaller trial sizes are accepted by health authorities compared to the common diseases. Yeah? Another big advantage is that you need to pay less fees for various activities in different countries. For example, the NDA, BLA, MA application submissions and for some other procedures, the fees is less. For your easy understanding, I have given you this overview for EU, where a protocol assistance is provided by EMA and support is provided throughout drug development before MA submission or during initial MA application submission or for various inspection processes. How much the fees will be reduced is also dependent on if pharmaceutical company is small pharmaceutical enterprises that is SME or non-SME. The SME gets more benefits on fees compared to non-SMEs, right? As you can see that even the 100% fees is reduced for SMEs. So this was about fees reduction. Sixth advantage is pre-licensing access. For example, off-label, compensate use, this is something which is allowed in some countries for orphan drugs even before we get the license for that drug. If you want to know what these terms off-label and compensate use are, I made a separate video on this in past. You can check out those videos for your understanding. Other advantage is accelerated review procedure. What is this? Your application can be reviewed faster compared to the standard review cycle. That means your drug can be approved earlier than the normal drugs. Again, this benefit is different depending on which countries you are submitting your application, right? So different countries has differences in the, those kind of benefits. Then in last comes market exclusivity. This is very important benefit. Do you remember what is market exclusivity? I made a separate video on this in past. You can check that video for your understanding. So different countries provide different market exclusivity if your drug is approved as orphan drug. To conclude this entire video, you can see in this figure the comparison of benefits or incentive that are provided by US, EU or Japan, Australia and Switzerland including their marketing exclusivity, research grant, tax exemptions and so on. So all those benefits have been summarized in this figure. Similarly, this figure provides you the comparison of benefits or incentives that are provided by Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan, Brazil and China. So this was all about the incentives provided for orphan drug development worldwide. In the next upcoming video, we will discuss the regulatory procedures and timelines for orphan drug designation in various countries one by one. But before we end this video, do you know how much time does it take to receive the orphan drug designation in US and EU? If you know the answer, then let me know in the comment section. If you don't know, then don't worry. We'll discuss that in the next upcoming video. Till then, let's stay tuned.